Do you reckon yeah. it'll be easier once we do the first one? The first workshop, the intensive, like once we do, do you reckon like managing all the stuff? At this scale? Honestly, it hasn't been that hard. Yeah, I think the just, other stuff is way yeah, harder. It's probably all, everything's kind of coming to a work. Yeah. yeah. Events just come with a huge amount of anxiety. Yeah. Because yeah. what if no one comes? Mm. And that's, that's yeah. it. <laughs> what if no one comes? True. And... So the story behind this, and I've planned on putting it on socials after this, is we actually had another team approach us and say, hey, we want to run. It was originally going to be like an Aussie symposium, which we'd talked about for years. Like when we our plan was open, the gym we had set up pre-lockdown was going to be built to run events. Yeah. Let's get... With plenty of space. Yeah. Let's get every coach we possibly... That we like and respect and want to talk and blah, blah, blah about... And put them all in one room for a weekend and Mm. just have like this Aussie event. And then we get to speak as well. That'd be our Mm. reward. So like, fuck it. All right, let's do it. And then once you started to realize what was actually involved. And then I think the boys... Had a few conversations with some people they had on the list and they were sort of like, mm, I don't know if that really hits what we were looking for. Mm. And for whatever reason, they were just like, we're going to go in a different direction. Yeah. Um, let's call it. We obviously hadn't talked about it publicly or anything, so it was easy to walk away. But we'd paid the deposit. We'd paid 50% for the room. Mm. And it was like, it's a pretty expensive room. Should we do it? <laughs> <laughs> and we are like... Fuck it. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> and then someone messed up the date and realized that it was due three weeks, in three weeks' time. So thankfully, they've rescheduled the date. <laughs> <laughs> the most STC thing ever. Fuck me. <laughs> we were staying. We What were we? Uh, we were away, yeah? I was. Oh, yeah. 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 I You're think in- we were eight floors up and that balcony was... Like, I might just... Yeah, not deal with this. <laughs> I looked at that calendar so many times. I'm like, this just does not make any fucking sense. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, so we moved it, and even as of now, like we're still two weeks away, mm. we've ticked every possible box we could want to. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, we actually had someone in standout yesterday say like they're scared of running events. Mm. You just go fucking do it. Yeah, yeah. You gotta, you've got to run them with the idea that no one's gonna come. Mm. Because then when people do, it's good. Yeah. 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 And that's, yeah. So we, do, we'll have a year's worth of content. Yeah. After this. Yeah. That's the best mindset to have. Yeah. Too. Mm. Yeah. Because then it doesn't matter. Correct. And then if you only have three people, but that's your mindset, you still deliver a fucking wicked show. Yeah. 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 I think going into a workshop thinking like you're going to kind of sell it out and stuff is probably a bit unrealistic for most. Mm. Not everyone, of course. Yeah. Um, and depending on where you are, if you're running it out of your gym and stuff, you might be a bit more fortunate. <clears throat> but either way, it's like if you can show up and do and repurpose the content, even just practice for when there is a room full of more people, it's like all of those things will serve you yeah. in the future. Yeah. Just kind of you know, spirals on. Yeah. Like I kind of remember how many people our first one was, but it wouldn't have been a lot. Yeah. But I, I, yeah. I don't remember the first public one. We, we did, did a lot of. Uh, we did a lot of. I think because we did a lot of ones in our gym. Yeah, I reckon that's the best place to start if you are a face to face coach. It's like just present to your clients. Yeah, in the gym, and yeah. then and then start inviting their friends, and then you know open up to the public, and then next thing you know, you probably got 30, 40 people coming. Yeah, to to your gym. Yeah, I did one when I first got to Windy Hill, and I think I had eight. Yeah, and that was like hard. So yeah. It's not a lot of people. Tough crowd. Yeah. Yeah. And they didn't know who I was. Yeah. So it's it was hard challenging. Too. But yeah, I'm trying to think of what the worst one we've ever done is. Uh-huh. They've all sort of turned out okay. Yeah. Don't think there's been a bad one. Maybe a couple of ALPT ones that were terrible. <laughs> yeah, but they weren't. <laughs> no, but they weren't. Our fault. No, no. That's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I agree. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I can't think of one where we had no one turn up. Oh, like, no. Like, it's always Like, been... walked into a room and gone, oh, no. Yeah, no. Nah. I don't think so either. Mm. So just do it. Yeah. Yeah. Build small, focus on repurposing content and getting good at the thing. Yeah. Because we did so much of it, even with the mentorship early, like we presented yeah. once a month Yeah. on a topic in front of a room of 10 people mm. 
that were our people and just presented and presented and presented and now we present twice a week in standout. Correct. And then we podcast. Yeah. So it's like, yeah. <laughs> it's practice. It's three to six hours a week that we're delivering content. Mm. Yeah. And then writing. The other yeah. thing that came out of the workshop yesterday was just like a lot of people weren't confident in what they were going to deliver. Yeah. And it was just like the same with the, the workshop thing. It's like write down stuff. Yeah. Write a blog. doesn't matter if no one reads blogs anymore. Mm. Write your yeah, thoughts Yeah, you get to down. figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. And even we were talking about like social media content creation and stuff. Like I, I don't want to be that guy. That's like, don't fucking use AI, bro. Be old school. Yeah. But I think it's so important to be able to write <laughs> for yourself. And you can turn the dial up with AI and check it and stuff. Yeah, but I think you need to be able to, when it's content, it's understanding your client. When it's mm. process, it's understanding your methods. Yeah. And we talk about like Hormozy's like stack of proof thing. Every little bit that you do like that is a stack of proof. Yeah. Every time you sit back and go, that's really good. Yeah. That's a stack of proof. And if ChatGPT writes it for you, you don't, you don't get have that. It. Yeah. And if you do that for a year, you've missed out on a year's worth of proof. Yeah. Yeah. I think um, when you're trying to understand things, there's no point putting it into AI to get it to talk to about whatever it is because you totally missed the boat on why you were going to yeah. learn and write about it in the first place. Yeah. You asked like, you know, how do I use it now? It's kind of like, I because re- I already know what I'm going to talk about. <clears throat> so I put like the key points in it. So I'm basically writing most of it myself anyway. Yeah. And it's kind of just blending it together in a way that probably isn't perfect, but yeah. it's better than I would do or the time it would take me to blend it together just wouldn't be worth it. Yeah. So I think that instance, it's really good. But it's like, if you've never talked about a concept before and you're going to start to use AI to lean on that, mm that's where the problem lies yeah 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 and i think the the thing that personal trainers miss the most and obviously yesterday the weekend's intensive has been about that and that's what we try and one of the biggest take-homes for standout too is like actually just understanding the client yeah because that's what your whole business is based on Mm. like yeah i was telling the story like i wrote we call it a value compass and just like your business on a page you can call it maybe like your position in the market as well. Like, what do you actually do? What problems do you solve? What do you serve? Who do you serve? Like, yeah, all yeah. of that's really laid out in this one thing. And we talk about writing down 100 pain points of your clients. Mm. So, I had my um, allergic to the office day. Some days I'm just like, I just can't go to my computer. Yeah. It's like, I just, <laughs> <laughs> and I'll get my laptop and work from the couch or like went to a cafe or whatever. I was in the cafe for like an hour and a half and I just wrote as many pain points as I could come up with because it was not my client. I was writing it for someone else. So I had to like sit down and be like, yeah. okay, so what, what is this person worried about? The person that goes to this service, mm. what are they worried about? What are they thinking about every day? What struggles do they have? What are they going to be waking up thinking about? What experience of, experiences have they had that left sour taste in their mouth? And yeah. what are they going to be conscious of next time and if they've been in the gym for two years what does that mean Can, is it useful to talk to someone who's not been to the gym like all of those types of yeah, things yeah, like yeah. telling someone who's been training for two years to not use this bar the squat bar pads useless yeah do you know what i mean so yeah, yeah going yeah. through that process i then sat down to the what a lot of people are terrified of when we show them the value compass they're like oh my god so overwhelming because mm. they don't know their client yet yeah, the value compass took five minutes because mm. it was just like here's the per- now the person's here. Yeah, it's like I've just built it in my head, and okay now, brr, mm. like these are the core problems. This is how we solve them. Do we solve every problem they have? Yes, the business is good. It's valid. It has a position in the market. Let's go. Yeah, that's a big rant. That's pretty good though. <laughs> <laughs> the coffee's hit. So yeah, I think the the take home is don't skip the writing. Yeah, because yeah. you could quite easily, like you hear me say or us say, like go write down a hundred pain points of your clients, and okay. go like, what do people worry about for fat loss? Yeah, yeah. in ChatGPT, give me a hundred, and you have a hundred, and you'll be no better off than when you started. Yeah. 
So even like the people that I wrote it for, I was like, you need to go add at least 50, like go spend an hour on this. Mm. You have to. Taking my list is not enough. No. Because I just built the list for my own mind. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's important. How long, Tam? An hour. Okay, sick. I think I have one more. Sure. I don't. That's it. Cool. Done. <laughs> Wrap it up. 